Today we are taking a look at the brand new M2 Pro and M2 Max MacBook Pros and figure out if it really is worth the hype and if you should upgrade or not. My answer might surprise you, so make sure to watch the entire video. As you all know, Apple just recently dropped a press release and an 18 minute YouTube video showcasing the updated 14 inch and 14 inch MacBook Pros. Now, this was rumored to have been cut out of an event that was supposed to happen late last year and honestly, I can see why, because the URL and the file name of that video had 2022 in it. Clearly, these bad boys were ready to go months ago, but hey, they are here now and that's all that matters. Let's find out if you should get these beasts or not. But first, intro. What's up everyone? Peter here. Just look at these new MacBook Pros. Well, on the outside they are basically identical to their predecessors. Nothing has changed. You get this dope, sleek design, XDR quality, high refresh rate, mini LED display, all the ports like HDMI and SD card slot and the MagSafe. But on the inside, we've got the new M2 Pro and M2 Max chips delivering 20% more CPU performance and 30% better GPU performance compared to the M1 Pro and M1 Max. Obviously, this huge shift was from Intel-based architecture to Apple Silicon, so these numbers are pretty incremental in my opinion. So, why did Apple do it then? Maybe because the 3 nanometer chips are not ready yet and they had to stick with the 5 nanometer versions. Of course, they added more high efficiency cores and GPU cores and more encoders, but I'm not gonna spend too much time on synthetic benchmarks because on paper they are just out of this world with the single core score being just over 2000 with the multi-core score north of 15,000. One could say they are insane, but you, my friend, you can be like, hey, Peter, it looks dope on paper, but what does this 20 to 30% increment mean in real world scenario? Well, let me tell you this. For someone who needs the most powerful laptop available right now, these MacBooks can handle whatever you throw at it. It definitely is impressive. As was the M1 Pro and M1 Max. Let me put it in context for you. My last Intel-based $60,000 Max Out Mac exported this 4-minute B-roll from Final Cut Pro X using tons of effects and plugins with 120 FPS 10-bit log files from my Sony A7S 3 in just three and a half minutes. Then the M1 Max came along and the same export only took 32 seconds. And now here is the M2 Max and guess what? Really, stop the video and comment a wise guess. You know, under the like button, which by the way, you could smash if you enjoyed this video. Ready? Like, subscribe, comment, and then did all the things that the YouTube guys ask you to do. Okay, good. So it took 23 seconds. That's just so much better with this 30% increment that uh, Apple promises on paper. But what does it mean in real life? How much is that 10 seconds? And it is just an export. The experience during editing is way more important and I can't really see too much lag even with effects or dropped frames on the M1 Max. And when I rarely do, rendering out a short clip only takes a couple of seconds even with tons of effects and using plugins like Motion VFX or Color Finale. So here is the thing, why would you care? Even if you get slightly better battery life, but it already handles a full day of work with these with the M1 Maxes. Even if it got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth uh, 5.3 and HDMI 2.1, just let me know if you have Wi-Fi 6E routers or if you have 8K displays or if you have any problem with connecting your AirPods or other Bluetooth devices. Because guys, I don't. And in my home office, I connect my MacBook via an Ethernet cable. So again, while all of this tech is awesome, it just doesn't justify upgrading for real life work improvements. Unless you are someone who would leverage these things. If you would, please let me know in the comments. To be fair, as Tyler Stellman highlighted, the difference can be significant when working with 8K footage, but again, 
Do you? And basically, this is my bottom line. If these do matter to you, go for it by all means. You are going to future-proof yourself for sure and get what you are paying for. But for 99% of us, uh, we can just hang on to our M1 Pros and M1 Maxes. And if you want to finally upgrade from your Intel-based Mac, you might want to look for deals and discounts on the M1 Max. At least this is what I would do. And then we'll see what the three nanometer chips uh, bring to the table and how they will affect our everyday workflow. And talking about everyday workflow, your computer is just one part of the equation. There are so many other factors that can make your life uh, way more easier and efficient like uh, what external hard drives you use, what Thunderbolt hubs, uh, speakers, displays, keyboard or mouse you use. All these add up and uh, provide you with everything you need to get shit done and be as productive and inspired as possible. I've spent so much time to fine tune my home office studio and if you want to learn more about the hacks and awesome gear I assembled, why don't you check out my detailed uh, video series about it? It will be right here. Also, if you are a fellow creator, well, hi there, drop a comment, I'd love to see your work. And if you want to see mine, here is an intense creamy b-roll I edited on my M1 Max MacBook with ease. Check it out. Like, comment and subscribe with smashing the notification bell as well. Tons of content coming up, so thanks for watching, I'll catch you in the next one, maybe in this clip. Bye.